Welcome back to the Michigan Business Beat, brought to you on the Michigan Business Network. I'm Chris Holman in our downtown studios, and uh, and we have a special guest today. U.S. Senator Debbie Stabenow joins us. And uh, Senator, it's very good to see you. How are you doing? I am doing well, and it's so good to see you, although I can't wait till we're back in person rather than all this Zooming, this virtual stuff here. It's getting a little old, so I'm anxious to be able to get get back to just being in a room together. <laughs> I think to an extent, Zoom will remain a part of our lives, but I, we were joking that we've seen each other more on Zoom than, right. than we have in person for the first year of uh, uh, ever, right. I think, in our relationship. Okay. I, I want to get right to one thing because I know yeah. it's really important and it's big on your list, the Growing Climate Solutions Act. T tell everybody about that and, and your role in that. Well, as I'm now back chairing the Agriculture, Nutrition, and Forestry mm -hmm. Senate, um, among uh, many other assignments. And I've been working for a long time uh, to get um, agriculture and our forest landowners and others working with uh, our food businesses and so on to come together to understand the role they can play as part of stopping carbon pollution and other greenhouse gases. And the exciting thing is that we have now brought everybody together and have passed a, a bill out of the Agriculture Committee unanimously to the floor of the Senate, only bipartisan climate bill uh, that has come out of the committee. And it's directing the USDA to work with everyone in agriculture and forestry to come up with a, a voluntary way for them to participate, not only in more aggressive um, climate smart conservation that keeps carbon in the soil, which is better for the soil, it's better for the crops, uh, keeps it out of the air, keeps, you know, use wood more and planting more trees, all things that sound so basic, but actually make a huge difference in addressing the climate crisis. And we're setting up a way for them to get the technical expertise, then to take what they're doing and measure the carbon savings and then use that to go into the private carbon markets and actually be able to have it as a revenue source. They can actually, you know, make money for doing the right thing. And so we're setting this up. Uh, it's all a voluntary choice, but there's a lot of excitement in Michigan and across the country about the important way that I, I call it land-based solutions to help with the climate crisis, that it can really make a difference. Senator, is, uh, and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about here, is methane a part of this? Yes, absolutely. In fact, methane, as you know, and nitrogen oxide are actually more dangerous greenhouse gases. And so the dairy industry, for instance, is developing this closed loop process, you know, using method, methane produced uh, to uh, power electricity on the farm and so on, um, but basically zero, net zero emissions. And we even see our utilities in Michigan that are contracting with uh, dairy farms to uh, address this in terms of the, the methane and so on. So there's a lot that can be done uh, in the space where agriculture, our farmers, our foresters can be leaders and uh, really make a difference. Well, and I, I wanna remind everybody that that's small businesses that are big business. We we need those farmers. We definitely do. Well, as, as you know, I mean, Chris, it just uh, one more thing. I mean, our farmers, but also then they are selling uh, to um, processors <clears throat> and retail operations and so on. And, you know, what we saw in the pandemic is that because the large purchasers of food were shut down, we lost a whole part of our supply chain, the grocery store piece kept going. Um, and so but we have these supply chains that are full of small businesses. Yeah, it's a, it, it, it has been kind of a crazy circumstance at how strategic COVID has really affected us. But let's talk a little bit about the small business aid in, in the American Rescue Plan. Yes. Well, first of all, let me say that um, with all the COVID packages in the last year, uh, you know, what, one of the most successful things has been the Paycheck Protection Program. We've had over 215,000 loans in Michigan alone and um, have 
extended that um, and, and are going to be doing more in the, in the small business space uh, to try to help businesses. You know, it started, we didn't know how long this was going to last in the beginning. So we were trying to just help small businesses keep the lights on and keep their employees in place and so on. And then, of course, this kept evolving and evolving and evolving. We had to keep, um, you know, changing, expanding what was happening. But the American Rescue Plan not only extended the PPP funding, but restaurants who have just been slammed, as we know, um, he received uh, separate funds as well. And our live venues, you know, when I think about all the small towns in Michigan, like where I grew up in Clare, and in so many places, they have restored the theater as part of the downtown economic development efforts. And so we've got all these beautiful theaters coming back. And again, everybody had to close. And so uh, the restaurant fund has given out about $2 billion just in the last week to restaurants. And it's there are way more people applying than there are funds. So we'll have to, that certainly addresses the need. And then very soon, what we call live venues, but the movie theaters, the stages, and so on, are going to be getting um, help as well. And then there's another program that actually way under, way, seems like forever, a long time ago under the Obama administration, Senator Levin and I authored a, a um, state small business credit initiative working with MEDC to help back up loans uh, through MEDC, working with banks. And uh, that's laid dormant for the last uh, number of years. And Senator Peters and I have been able to get that reactivated as well. So there's additional tools through MEDC. Well, listen, I, I want to get that out because you do so much for a business and small business and people, it goes unrecognized. And I, I always like to toot your horn because I know you're not, you're not good at that. Yeah, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> U.S. Senator Debbie Savino, thanks so much for taking the time to join us and, and keep up the good work. And, and until we have coffee, I'll see you on TV. Absolutely. Always. Thank you so much for all of your wonderful work. Well, glad to be a part of it. And we're all just trying to keep up with you. You're, uh, you're watching the Michigan Business Beat on the Michigan Business Network. I'm Chris Holmes. We'll be back with you.